OK, so we're actually going to do some hypothesis tests now, because we've got everything like ready to go. So we're going to actually finish this full question that we did. John tosses a coin eight times, and it comes up heads six times. He claims the coin is biased towards heads with a significance level of 5%. Test his claim. Do, do we should already remember, is this going to make him think that the coin is biased towards heads six, six times? Yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Remember, the critical region was seven. OK, so we're going to do it in a slightly different way, though, to just show that this works. So step one, define the test test. I knew I had to say it again. Statistic x stating its distribution. So x or let x be the number of heads. Do you always have to state that? You should do. In the, I looked at some mark schemes. There's not often marks for this, but they might say as part A, write down what the test statistic is. But it's good practice to just say what it is every single time. So let x be the number of heads. We would say that x is binomially distributed. It is being flipped eight times. Um, and the parameter p is 0 0.5. Or we sometimes write this like 8 and p. And we say p is the probability of heads, OK? But it's quite fine just to say this top one that we've got here. Then we write down the null and alternative hypotheses. You get a mark for doing this, even if you can't do the rest of the question. You might as well get this free mark. So the null hypothesis is that we think the coin is just 0 0.5. The alternative hypothesis, he thinks that the probability of getting heads is biased. He thinks it's bigger than 0 0.5. Now we're going to actually find out what is if h naught. Let's sorry. Assume that h naught is true. If we assume that h naught is true, let's find the probability that the number of coins that he got he got six. Let's find out six or more extreme. The reason I'm interested in more extreme is because the probability is bigger than 0 0.5. So I want to know what if it's the six or more, OK? The probability that x is greater than or equal to six. This is probably one where using your calculator does a good job. You can use the tables if you want to. I've got the tables down here, but we know that you could just use your calculator for this as well. So I'm going to go straight in, and I'm going to do mine on my calculator. So I've got between 6 and 8. The number of trials is 8, and the probability is 0 0.5. And it's 0 0.1445, which is the same as doing 1 minus this one. OK? The calculator can do it all at once, or it's the same as saying that the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6 is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 5, which is this value that we've got here. OK? Then all we can say is, well, this probability is bigger than 0 0.05, which is our significance level. So there is not or not enough, sorry, there is no evidence to suggest no evidence to reject the null hypothesis. That's what one of the marks is there for. There is a second mark, which is to put it in context of the original problem. If you do this whole question and you don't bother putting it in the context of the, of the question, you're just throwing away a free mark. So there is no evidence to reject H0. The coin is a fair coin. That's what it suggests, OK? And we kind of knew that this was going to happen with the critical region, because we said the critical region was less than or equal to 1, I think, um, or greater than or equal to 7. And 6 is not in that region that's critical, so it's not something that we think that should be um, significant. Yeah? So can, can you just say then? If it's, it's not in the critical region, therefore. You could say that, but we're, I'm pretending we haven't done what the critical region is. So you can do them using critical regions, or you can do them using this particular way of doing it as well. OK? Can I go on to the next bit? Yeah. No. 
It'll all be on uh, Padlet as well. This is the other way that you could do this. We've already looked at what the critical regions were. Okay, So it's the same thing as before. X is the number of heads. P is the probability of heads. X is binomially distributed with X trials and the probability P. The null hypothesis is that P is 0.5. The alternative hypothesis is that P is greater than 0.5. The critical region, looking from the table, the first one that goes above 95% is this one. We add one on. The critical region is that x is greater than or equal to 7. And then step 4, because 6 is not in the critical region, we uh, do not reject the null hypothesis, and so the coin is not biased towards heads. Yeah? I think we've spent a lot more time on this than you did in year 12, and I think that's actually all you needed. I think you just need more time, more time to actually think about what the ideas of this are. Yeah, Muhi. So in an example, would you suggest this method or the other one? Um, I would suggest whatever method the question tends to be leading you down. If they've asked you to do anything with critical regions, just do critical regions. Personally, I just prefer doing the other one because I can just put it straight in my calculator rather than like looking through a table. Um, but if they ask for critical regions, 100% use the tables. Okay, the calculator for critical regions is is messy in my opinion. I think we're going to do a proper one that's not the same old John flipping a coin eight times. It's getting on my nerves, that same example again and again and again. Now it's drugs. Now it's drugs. Now we move on to drugs. <laughs> okay. The standard treatment for a particular disease has a two-fifths probability of success. A certain doctor has undertaken research in this area and has produced a new drug which has been successful with 11 out of 20 patients. The doctor claims the new drug, new drug represents an improvement on the standard treatment. Test at the 5% significance level the claim made by the doctor. Why has the doctor said that it's an improvement? Good, because he got over half. He got 11 out of 20. The expected amount you would have thought to get, and it's always worth thinking about this, would be two-fifths of 20, which is eight. So he was expecting eight, and he got 11, and he's like, I think this is an important test. This is actually how a lot of science works, okay? So it's, it's actually a very, very useful area of maths to know. Okay, so we'll just define the test statistic. So x is, what is x going to be? Okay, the number of patients successfully treated. And P is the probability of successful treatment. So X is binomially distributed with 20 people in that small sample that he took with probability P. In our case, it's going to be two fifths. That's what we think. Let's pretend the doctor is wrong. The null hypothesis of just saying, I think everything is just as it is. The null hypothesis is that probability is two fifths, but I just prefer to go with 0.4, okay? Now, the alternative hypothesis in this case is made clear to you in the question. It didn't say the doctor thinks that the drug is different. It says the doctor thinks that there is an improvement on the standard result. So what does he think about the probability? He thinks it's greater than 0.4, okay? Notice how he doesn't think that it's necessarily 11 out of 20. He just thinks that it, it's bit, a bit better than 0.4 because he knows about this variation. Yeah? If in the question it said, rather than uh, he claims that it's better, if he said, oh, the doctor thinks this is different, would you have to show the steps that, oh, we expect to get a 
If it said that he thinks it's different, you would still say that the probability is not equal to 0.4 and do a two-tailed test. So you wouldn't use the 11 out of 10 20? You would use that, but you wouldn't, you would, for this stage, you'd say the probability is not equal to 0 0.4 and the significance level would be 2.5% at the extreme end. You'd still be looking at that end. You wouldn't be bothered about the lower end because we've just seen that extreme thing, but the significance level would be halved, okay? So we've done step uh, step one and step two. We're now going to find out the probability of the observed test statistic. I thought I wasn't going to have to say that again. Or more extreme, assuming the null hypothesis. So we're going to assume h naught. In other words, x is binomially distributed with 20 people and a probability of 0.4. That's what we think. It's just We're just going to expect that the drug is working in that kind of way. And if that was the scenario, if I did a test and I had 11 or more people, I've got to do them more extreme than that. And the reason it's more than 11 is because we're looking at something that is bigger than 0.4. Well, I can either look that up in the table or I can look that up on my calculator. Do the normal calculators do between, it's not always between zero and zero, yeah? Do the, those ones, can I just have a quick look over your shoulder? So it goes binomial, cumulative, variable. Oh, yeah, so you have to put in the longer way. So greater than or equal to 7 is uh, 7. Greater than or equal to 11 is 1 minus less than or equal to 10. Agreed? Yep. So you're going to do 1 minus whatever the calculator gives you. But if you have a graphics calculator, you can do this all at once, can't you? So 0, 10. 10, 0.4. What have I done wrong? Oh, yeah. Number of trials, 20. So it's 1 minus 0 0.8725, which is 0 0.1275. What, did you, what do you notice about that? Um, it's not it's not less than, it's actually bigger than, and you can write it on this same line, it is bigger than 5%. So it's not significant enough. Good. So, there is not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. That's one of the marks. So then the doctor the Good. The doctor's claim is not supported. The doctor's claim is not supported. Same level of success for the drug. Which is kind of interesting, right? Because if you were trying to make a claim about something, you would be like, hey, I did an experiment. I gave people this drug and it seemed to be way better than the other drug. And then someone just comes back to you and says, well, there was a 12% chance of that happening. Sorry, it's not significant. And that's what happens a lot in clinical trials. People think that they have found something that has made a big difference to the way that people will treat someone. And then when you look at the maths of it, you just go like, well, it was just like, it's not very significant. Or they might say, oh, it was a 1% chance of it happening and it happened. So you can't, it's very, very difficult to prove things. With, with medical stuff. You've got to have huge numbers of trials for this to work, okay? Can I do one more? Or is it two-tailed next? Yes. Yep. No, because x is actually the thing that we're measuring. And so when I say that x is greater than or equal to 11, I'm saying what is the probability that the, su the successful number of patients is greater than or equal to 11 out of 20 patients that were there, OK? Because the number of patients is n. So x is the number of successfully treated patients that, that get rid of the disease. OK. So why don't we do your turn on this one, and then we'll do two-tailed, and then we'll finish up on that bit, OK?